Hey everyone, my name is Sarah. Welcome to my channel. Um, today, since it's so hot and sticky out, and I know I shouldn't complain after like eight months of winter, um, I'm choosing to stay in my air conditioning with all my fans on, so sorry about the excess background noise. But I am going to do kind of a next level mixing situation. So I'm going to mix all of my primers, all of my foundations, all of my concealers, each in its own little group and apply it to my face. Um, I'm also mixing um, all of my setting powders as well. Um, past that, it's just gonna be a really basic look. I already have my skincare on. I also have a lot of sweat from this weather. And then I've also put on my eyebrows. Um, I'm also filming on my iPhone today because my camera was totally dead and I was impatient. So, with that being said, I already dispensed everything into the dishes because I have a lot, a lot. I work for a cosmetics company. Um, I am very blessed to receive gratis from a variety of brands that I can try their stuff and gain an understanding and then be able to recommend it. So a lot of what I'm using uh, was given to me um, so I don't feel so bad wasting it but if you spend your hard-earned money on these products um, it's totally up to you if you decide you want to take on this little uh, endeavor. So without further ado, I'm just gonna go through each product and then show you what the pile looks like in my little bowl before I mix it up and apply it. Uh, so for primers, uh, the first thing I'm gonna show you is a liquid glow from Anastasia. It's kind of like a primer slash face highlight. I would never use this by itself, maybe either mixed in with foundation or underneath it. Um, so that's my first one. The next one is just a mini of the YSL Touche Clot Blur Primer. So it's pretty much like a silicone base with little gold flecks that kind of just disintegrate into nothing on the skin. Um, I did a pump of the Veil Mineral Primer from Hourglass. I did a pump of the Hangover Primer from Too Faced. Did a small dispense of the Professional from Benefit. Did a few drops of the Josie Marin Moonstone Drops. This is her light argan oil with a pearl powder in the bottom so you give it a shake. And it's just this glowing magic. You can wear it underneath your foundation or mixed in with your foundation, and it is incredible. Um, I did a pump of the Time Check Lotion from MAC. I've had this for quite some time, but it hasn't expired. Uh, I did one pump of the Banana Brick Face Primer from Ula Henriksen. I did a pump of the Primed and Peachy from Too Faced. Did a small amount of the Original Photo Finish Primer from Smashbox. Did a little bit of the Good Hydrations from Bare Minerals. Highly underrated, nobody ever talks about it. If you need a good hydrating primer and you don't wanna break the bank, get this one. And then the final one uh, that I did was a pump of the Hydro Grip Primer from Milk. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 primers. So it's a lot. Um, this is what they look like. I haven't mixed them together. I'm going to now. And I'm just gonna use this little spatula that I bought at a Mac Pro store. And I'll be curious to see if these even come together since they're different bases. Some are water-based, some are silicone. It's chunky. And I did this in little ceramic ramekins because I'm gonna wipe them out and then put them in my dishwasher when I'm done. This is what it looks like when it's all mixed together. So it's kind of chunky, kind of funky, but I'll scoop some out and apply it to my face with clean fingers. Try not to take too much. So this is what I'm gonna apply. It smells nice. You can see the chunks of the peach Perfect primer. My brows are going to end up coming off throughout this, I'm sure. It was just enough for me to look presentable enough to get out of my place earlier for a quick errand. Um, I'm probably not going to keep the rest of this, so that's why I said in the beginning. Proceed with caution if you decide to undertake this because it's a big waste of product. All right, the next and biggest chunk of this, of course, will be foundations. So I have a lot, and before I start going through them, I'm going to grab something to put them in as I go through them. 
currently they're all just sitting on my desk here and uh, they're taking up a lot of space and there's a lot of glass and I don't need them to break. So with that being said, um, the first one I'm going to show you is Fenty and this is in the color 120. I originally bought this in 100, got rid of it. 100 did not look good on me, so that's why I got rid of it. Uh, the next product is more of like a tinted moisturizer, but it offers good coverage. Um, and that's the Touche Claw All-in-One Glow from Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, one pump of this. Did a pump of my favorite foundation in the entire world, the Lancome Tian Idol Ultra Long Wear, Ultra Wear, excuse me. Uh, this is in the shade 090 Ivory Neutral, my perfect shade, my favorite foundation in the entire world. I slept on this for a while, I don't know why, but once I tried it, nothing else can um, come close to being as great as that one. I did a pump of the Vanish Liquid from Hourglass. This is in the shade Blanc. Did one pump of the Dior Forever Foundation in 010. I think this was discontinued, now there's like a matte version and a dewy version, but work gave this to me, so who am I to complain about free Dior? Uh, I did a pump of the Naked Skin Foundation from Urban Decay. This is in the shade 1.0. This is water-based. Uh, the other ones I've just talked about are either silicone or dimethicone, I believe. Uh, I did a little dispensing of the Cover FX Power Play in N10. So most of my foundations are going to be in my shade, thankfully. Um, this is an exception, of course. I did a little bit of Mac Face and Body in white. I bought this at the Pro Store in Miami. Um, same place where I bought my spatula. These are good investments, by the way. This thing's heavy. Um, I dispensed a little bit of Clinique Even Butter, which is also really amazing. Uh, this is in WN01 Flax. I don't know what VF stands for. Very fair. End of the day, it's beautiful. Uh, if you're familiar with MAC shades, as I've disclosed before, and I will again right now, I wear an NC10. I am pale, but I am not pink. Uh, the next one, which was like kind of a deluxe sample that we received, is the Bounce Foundation from Beauty Blender. This is in the Blend 1.10. I think it's their lightest neutral undertone. So there's that. Next is the Marc Jacobs uh, Shameless Youthful Look 24 Hour Foundation with SPF 25 in Fair Y110. I never wear this ever 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 the one time I tried wearing it it was such a frustrating attempt at wearing foundation I tried it with a brush I tried it with a damp beauty blender it wasn't working I would try and pat it on brush it in it was just streaky and lifting and shifting and sliding and it frustrated me so much that I wiped my makeup off and moved on to something else that rarely happens uh, the next foundation is NARS. This is the Sheer Glow in the color Siberia. A little bit of that since I don't have a pump for it, just pour it out a little. Uh, I squeezed out a little bit of the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid. This is in the color, where is the color? Porcelain. It's their lightest color after they did shade extensions. Uh, let's see here. The next one is the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Hydrating Foundation in 0.1. It's for a very fair skin tone with a neutral undertone. This stuff is awesome. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Uh, up next is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Porcelain. I think I managed to grab this at like Walgreens. Target doesn't carry the full shade range and that's a little disappointing because pale girls need to shop too. Uh, another one from NARS, it's a stick foundation. I don't know if they make this anymore. This is their Velvet Matte Foundation Stick in Siberia. It's super yellow, super yellow. I'm sorry if you see me looking down in that direction, but I'm looking at my computer for my viewfinder because I'm recording this on my iPhone. Um, up next, we have Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin 24 Hour Full Coverage Foundation. This is in the shade Y205. Then we have Kat Von D Locket Foundation. This is the color 42 Light Neutral. Their lightest shade actually looks gray on me. It's pretty remarkable that there are some brands out there that manage to put out a foundation that is actually too light for my pale ass face. Um, another one from Hourglass. This is their Vanish Stick in the color Blanc as well. Beautiful product. 
Um, we have from First Aid Beauty the Ultra Repair Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 30. Super light coverage, but I still count it because it is a complexion product that will offer something to the skin. From Too Faced, we have the Born This Way Foundation in Swan. From Tarte, we have the Amazonian Clay Full Coverage Foundation in 8B Porcelain Beige. Another one from Too Faced, another Born This Way is the color Cloud. When they shade extended, they let us pick out our shade again, so that was my selection. Uh, my final one is from Benefit, that's the Hello Happy Soft Blur Foundation in the shade number one. So, that is all of my foundations and primers for the moment. Um, all the foundations mixed look like so. They're running down. Um, so I'm going to grab my clean little guy here and just stir it all together. I'm curious to see if I can get the chunks from the uh, stick foundations to really mix in. This is such an excessive amount of product. This is like two, three, four weeks worth of makeup. And when I counted, I had like 23 or 24 foundation products to use. It's a little sickening. And then just to kind of report on how my skin feels with that primer having sat there after going through all those foundations. Feels nice. Feels hydrated, feels balanced, doesn't feel sticky or nasty greasy. And this is what the foundation looks like all mixed together. So the color looks kind of promising. Looks pretty neutral to be honest. Um, like most people, I forgot to bring my beauty blender out here, so stand by. All right, so I'm just gonna start scooping it with my little thing and kind of dotting it, and then I'm gonna blend it out with the beauty blender. So just a damp beauty blender, nothing revolutionary. dots happening from where those sticks didn't quite melt down but the color is definitely right no line of demarcation whatsoever in the realm of coverage I kind of like it it's like a medium to full that I can build which I probably will I didn't want to go too heavy on the first application. But thankfully, I have so much of this, I don't have to worry about running out. I think I am going to do a second layer of this. So moving on to concealers, we've got a fair amount of concealers as well. Some I've purchased, some have been given to me from work. Uh, the first one that I'm going to grab is the Creaseless Concealer from Tarte. This is in color 8S, Porcelain Sand. I do believe this is the lightest color. I'm not really fond of this by itself, but hopefully when I mix it with the other concealers, um, we don't have any problems. Uh, the next concealer is one that I did purchase. This is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. This is in the color Snow. It has kind of more of a pinky base, but my gosh, it is bright under my eye and offers really beautiful coverage. Um, another one that we have here is Kat Von D. This is her Lockett Concealer in the white shade. Pretty revolutionary when she came out with a white concealer because I couldn't find anything that could possibly brighten my under eye in the realm of like highlighting, um, but this will do it. I also use this as an eyeshadow base. Um, I don't really use it by itself though. Another concealer is the Naked Skin from Urban Decay. This is in the color Fair Neutral. Beautiful, beautiful concealer. Uh, one that really does the most, that doesn't get talked about enough, is the Cover FX Power Play Concealer. This is in N Fair One, lightest neutral tone. It's Remarkable. I used this the other day with the Power Play Foundation just to try to be bulletproof during this muggy weather. 
this didn't crease. It didn't crease after I was done blending it with my beauty blender and setting it with powder. It just stayed beautiful all day long. Um, another one that I mixed in is the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer from Too Faced. This is in the color Swan. This stuff is a freaking bomb. $29 for a half ounce of concealer. That's inexpensive. Really inexpensive. When you say compare it to NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, this is like less than a quarter of an ounce for $29. Half ounce, $29. 0.225 ounces for $29. I mean, it's remarkable. And they're both beautiful on the under eye. This is such a steal. If you've been looking for one, give this a shot. It's an outstanding formula. Um, so NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer is another one that I mixed in. This is in Chantilly. Chantilly, I don't know how to say it, like one. There you go. Um, I did buy the Jeffree Star Concealer from the Morphe Spark Mall of America. I bought it in C1. Didn't buy a C0 because that was white. I already have a Kat Von D white concealer. This stuff is really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. Uh, if it were more full coverage, I think it would probably be the best concealer I've ever used in my life. But for the moment, it still gets the job done. Another one that I mixed in is the MAC Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear Concealer. This is in the shade MC10. Outstanding under eye concealer. Really nice and brightening. It has that yellow undertone. So it's going to do the most. And then uh, the final concealer that I gave um, a little dab on the mixing board is the Fenty Concealer. This is in the number 105. I didn't go for 100 because once again, I thought it might be too light. This is a really nice concealer. I struggle to use it. I find that it's a little bit funky on my under eye area by itself, but when I mix it with another concealer that's a little bit more hydrating, I'll get the brightening effect, but not the funkiness that happens up here. And for this instance, I just mix them all on a little palette. And then I'll just mix them with my finger at this point because it's such a small amount. But I just rolled the applicator onto each one and then that was how I dispensed it. So mixing all together. I know the warmth from my finger is definitely helping this. And then whatever's on my finger, I'm just gonna dab where I need it. This is what it looks like. Nice and uniform. And if I need more, I'll just grab more after I'm done blending. So with that damp beauty blender, I'm going to blend my under eyes first. I'm also going to take excess product onto my lids. bad. It's kind of middle of the road in the realm of performance. I'm going to grab just a little bit more with that beauty blender to put on the under eye. As well as on my lid. I just didn't feel bright enough or covered enough. Skin and under eyes are looking quite phenomenal. Uh, I'm quite satisfied with the direction this is heading. So to set everything, I only have five powders, thankfully. It's going to go by quick as I talk about them. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is from the Crab Shop. Bought this at CVS. Didn't realize that it was more readily available, like at Riley Rose. But anyway, um, part of a cream beauty brand. It's just your regular old translucent powder. Uh, it was eight grams of product made in the USA, even though it's a Kate beauty brand. I don't know. It's just what you get. Uh, the next one is the Kat Von D setting powder, the locket setting powder, and translucent. Um, up next is a milk setting powder. It's their blur and set matte loose setting powder. This is in the translucent light. There's also a medium and a deep to accommodate the variety of skin tones. One that I recently got uh, from work and I've really, really been loving is the Peach Perfect uh, translucent um, setting powder. Oh, I love this. I love the way it looks on my skin, the way it sets my under eye, the way it smells. 
sadly, because it wafts into my mouth periodically, the way it tastes, it has a sweetness about it. So it's extremely pleasant. And then the final powder is the, um, what do we have here? The Veil Translucent Setting Powder from Hourglass. They were really good to me this year. Um, the foundations and powders and so forth. Um, even a mascara, which I haven't tried yet. Anyway, um, that's the final powder. So I just tapped a little bit of each of those into this container here. And thankfully they're powders, so they're going to be really easy to mix. Not all setting powders are created equal when it comes to, like, say, setting the under eye or, you know, areas that tend to crease. Let's hope that because there are some good ones in here, it won't be a problem. So this is how they look when they're all mixed together. Hard to tell because they all dump to the bottom, but you can see it. So I'm going to set my under eyes uh, with this powder with the Beauty Blender. So I'm just going to pat out that concealer again because, oh, she's creasing. I don't really fault concealers for creasing. My eye shape has no forgiveness. There's a lot of natural creases happening. It's not even an anti-aging problem. It's an eye shape thing. You don't pick your eye shape. So creasing will just happen with some people, such as myself. And then in addition to setting the under eye with this, I'm also setting the side of the nose with it. I'm just really trying to fill in those pores. Look as smooth as possible. I'm really, really impressed with the mixture of the foundations and like what those have done on my skin because they are really pretty. But we're gonna take this finish down to matte. It'll all come back to life with my other products. And then same thing on the lids. They're going to crease because of the shape of my eye. So I'm gonna pat a little bit more powder on. All right, now I'm going to grab the Mr. Right brush from Too Faced, my favorite powder brush ever. The whole video dedicated to this brush. I'm gonna just pick up some of that powder and press it into the rest of the face. Press and roll with that brush. No dragging. Oh my gosh, that peachiness is still wafting into my mouth and I'm not mad. And once that powder is all over, then I can go ahead and lightly dust. Just get off any excess. all-nighter setting spray from Urban Decay to hold everything down and before I miss my face I'm gonna grab something to fan it with and that's it um, for me <laughs> mixing all of my primers and then all of my foundations and then all of my concealers and then all of my setting powders um, you know it's fun, it's time consuming, uh, so I wanted to mix everything before the filming of this video. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support does mean the world. I'm sorry I've been absent for the past few months. Um, life, probably not the best excuse when it comes to social media, but that's what we get. Uh, so thank you for being here, for sticking with me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, um, tell your friends and family if you think they might find this interesting. If there is anything that I use that you'd like me to go into further detail on, please comment down below. If you want me to review anything, if you want me to do a look with anything, let me know. If you've got more in-depth thoughts on the Damn Girl Mascara by Too Faced, I can give you those. 
uh, initially. Um, I like it more than the toothpaste better than sex. So there's that. Um, so that will be the end of this video. Thank you again. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next one. Bye.